Has anyone ever, here ever been to Silicon Valley? Sir, show of hands. Quite a few. Do you know, do you know that in Silicon Valley, 40% of the residents are, are actually uh, born from outside of the United States? Isn't that amazing? 40% of the residents of Silicon Valley are born outside of the United States. So Silicon Valley has become the mecca, thank you very much, of the technology world. And it isn't because of the beaches, and it's not because of the traffic. Because if you've been to Silicon Valley, you know that that's not, that's not there. It's because the best and the brightest go to Silicon Valley from wherever they come from. And thankfully, people from the United States are open to working with these culturally diverse people, at least those that the government lets in. So if we want to create Ireland as the Silicon Valley of Europe, we must actually open our borders and create a frictionless environment for creating jobs. So on to my three things that I'm proposing for helping to create Ireland as the Silicon Valley of Europe. Number one, let's allow the population of Ireland to double in the next 20 years. So we're at 4.2 million in the Republic. Why shouldn't it be 8.4 or 9? We can easily support it. Let's allow up to 75,000 work visas per year to highly educated English-speaking technology workers of all industry segments. Let's, let's give everyone that goes to an Irish college uh, and graduates from, a, from a, uh, an engineering program or technology program the ability to stay here and contribute to our economy. And thirdly, let's create a unique and powerful partner in China, having Ireland be the gateway to Europe for the Chinese in just the same way that Ireland has been the gateway to Europe for America, in exactly the same way. Let's be that open. So, those are my three proposals. Why double the population? Why not? We're a country that is too small to have a significant internal market. It, it ruins our competitive uh, ability. It ruins our ability to get products uh, cheaply. Um, it reduces competition um, and increases our cost of living. So if we double our population, uh, we're still, if you look across the Irish Sea, we're still, uh, we're half the land area of the UK, right? Uh, but we're 15 times less the population. So we can easily uh, afford to, uh, to have a higher uh, population on this great big island, island of Ireland. So we have the uh, space to grow, and by growing, we can actually fill all these ghost estates and start to build again over the years, building housing and everything that goes with it, expanding our economy. We should become a land of plenty, a land of opportunity, a land where people are immigrating from, or immigrating to, rather than emigrating from. A side benefit to doubling our population, for those fiscally minded, is that it halves our debt bur burden. <laughs> people will be walking into this, 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 uh, this debt that we've created over ourselves alone over the years, uh, and they will actually uh, be, uh, that higher population base will help us pay that uh, debt down. So why open ourselves up to workers from other countries? Because we don't and we can't educate enough for ourselves, not if we want to become a, a digital Ireland, a Silicon Valley. Even if the U.S. with 320 million uh, population is importing workers for high tech. But I think we could do a lot better uh, in producing workers than we are now, and we will. If we open if we open ourselves up to workers around the world coming here and working here, we will generate jobs and wealth for Ireland. For every 75,000 high-tech, high-wage workers, that generates over a billion euro per year to the exchequer. Is that what we call it here in Ireland? The exchequer. Thank you. Uh, in payroll taxes. Every year. We are either going to create those jobs, outsource those jobs elsewhere, or we can have them come here and help contribute to our economy. So let me give you two quick stories about how a closed Ireland creates frictions that help destroy us rather than, than help us create a, a stronger nation that helps lead the world. Last year, my, 
my partner in SOS Ventures, Bill Liao, who's probably somewhere in this audience. There he is, way in the back. Um, he was a philanthropist, a serial entrepreneur, and has helped create a, a, several public companies. Applied uh, in Ireland for a work visa to work in Ireland. And he was denied. He was denied not once, not twice, but three times. And I am holding in my pocket here a letter dated yesterday from the Department of Jobs, Enterprise, and Innovation to our HR manager telling us that we have a worker uh, directed by the Minister of Jobs, Enterprise, and Innovation to refer to your application. I wish to inform you that granting a permit in this case is being refused. Every time we've tried to employ a worker from China, which even though that's, that's a large export market for us at Avego, or from other places around the world, this is the response we get. This is extraordinarily aggravating. <laughs> Has anyone experienced this? Has anyone experienced this? Lots of hands out there. So if we're trying to, if we're trying to create uh, an economy here, we need the workers to do it. This isn't, this isn't a day, day and age where it's a, the manufacturing jobs of the digital economy are not production line workers. The, the manufacturing jobs of the digital economy are knowledge workers. We have to get these knowledge workers from all over the world if we want to build a manufacturing and export a society here. So we're killing ourselves. We are allowing ourselves to be strangled via a bureaucratic death wish from our own government. A government, on the one hand, that says it's trying to create a digital economy for Ireland, and on the other hand, is doing everything it can to prevent it. It's been said often that one hand in government doesn't know what the other is doing. I would add, this is especially true if you have one of the fingers from one of the hands up your ass. Now, since the time that Ireland tried to eject Bill Liao, we, got, we did eventually get a, a work visa for him. Uh, he's gone on to fund several companies for SOS Ventures here in Ireland, including, actually including Silicon Republic, which is holding this great event today. Thank you very much for holding this event, Dana. Um, and to Storyful and a half dozen other uh, startups. But even more importantly than that, two of the workers for SOS Ventures, Bill Liao and, and James Weldon, who both work for SOS Ventures, created this thing called Coder Dojo. Has anyone heard of Coder Dojo? Several people have, lots of people have. You know, that is increasing Ireland's competitiveness dramatically. In the future, it'll take a few years. It'll take a few years to roll through. But we're here for the long term. We, the Irish, the Irish Americans, the Irish Australians, the Irish from where, where, the Irish Chinese, from wherever they're coming, we, the Irish, are trying to create a great future for Ireland. We've settled here. We want to be here. Welcome us. We welcome. We, we want to welcome other Irish to Ireland from all ethnicities. So Coder Dojo now, every weekend, attracts more than 1,000 kids in all of the locations. It's in, it's in, started in Cork, now it's in you know, several branches in Dublin, Galway, you know, Limerick. Actually, they're all over, all over the world now. There's 10 other locations in Ireland. But just in Ireland, over 1,000 kids are learning programming. It's kind of a, a Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts for, for computer programming. And uh, we're enabling young youth to recognize that they can create content and programming rather than being passive consumers of it. So we need your help. Now, on to my third and final point about opening the borders and our relationship with China. We have a special relationship with America, and that has generated tens of billions of inward investment into Ireland. I propose, I, and we have the unique opportunity, if, if you remember, the Chinese uh, premier came here, or the next premier, came here a few weeks ago as the only stop 
in, in his European uh, trip. And we have a special opportunity, as we have in the past, to have a tight relationship uh, with China. I propose that we become the first country in Europe to allow Chinese citizens to travel to Ireland without even requiring a visa, just like we do to Americans. We know that if we can open our borders for Ireland, it can do so much for our tourism industry and so much for our technology industry. What if we had the same relationship with China as we do with America? What if we had five of the largest Chinese companies set up their European headquarters in Ireland, and if we were the gateway to Europe for China and Asia as well? If each of these companies invested just 5 billion euro in Ireland, we may find ourselves in the situation we are trying to manage an overheated economy, but I'm telling you that's much better than trying to manage our way through a recession. Our Taoiseach is heading to, to China today with over, I guess, with 100 Irish companies. What if a free trade and border, open border philosophy with China opened up opportunities for our Irish companies in China and for direct foreign investments uh, by the Chinese people, their citizens in these companies? So I know what you're thinking. Oh my God. Foreigners. <laughs> we have to open Ireland, open our borders, open our minds, and open our hearts. We can become, we can become the America of Europe, the land of opportunity and plenty. Close Ireland, and we can say goodbye to what we've achieved in the last few decades as multinationals and local companies find it too expensive to work here, too uncompetitive, and too expensive to expand. So make your choice. Fear or faith. Faith is taking the first step even when you don't see the whole staircase. It's a quote from Martin Luther King. I think we can do quite a bit to, to improve our outlook. And that starts with all of us. So let's look in the mirror. Let's see what we can do. Let's dig down, open our, open our hearts, open our minds, open our borders. Thank you very much.